what's up y'all welcome back to another one where we got scp2480 and unfinished ritual usually i know like for me i live est time usually i upload scp videos at 9 p.m est time but i'm going to see if you guys like this better if i upload it either i'm not gonna say early morning but like like early morning you know what i'm saying we're gonna see you know what i'm saying how you guys like it early morning or if you guys rather get it at night let me know in the comments but we got the an unfinished ritual um obviously by the guy the rubber bro let's just let's not play the game bro let's get straight into this she wanna know where I be. She wanna know, yeah. Walking that bitch, cause I know I love my sleep. Walking with slime, yeah. That nigga mad, cause she wanna leave with me. Show that she mine, yeah. I let her brag. I be fucking this bitch. She showed her mind, yeah. Right, Action is advised. This place is wrong. The air, the people, the buildings. Hell, I swear even the sky looks like it's about so to collapse. So there's not even uh, the right universe. At night, I feel like there's... All right, I must ask you gotta go. I ain't gonna lie. That shit is giving me very much Caterpillar vibes. I don't even know what to call that, bro. That shit is just... Bro, it, just, it looked like Rick and Morty fingers. You know what I'm saying? Like... Someone or something in my room. Everywhere I go, I feel like I'm being watched. You're definitely not the right place, The G. locals here didn't seem to mind us at first. In fact, we even had a feast during the first day. But now, every one of them looks like they're avoiding us, or perhaps avoiding something that we don't understand. They just look at us with their shifty eyes. I sleep close to the door because the wall at the end of the room gives off a dreadful feeling. I could hear something like a chanting or some sort of oh an nah, eternal scream crazy. ringing faintly behind that awful painting. The walls feel suffocating. Sometimes I have nightmares about them coming alive and turning into walls of viscera and collapse, buried what the hell is Vesira? Being me alive. I see strange men in shrouds at the corner of my vision. I smell so, rot. Sound like a really bad like mushroom trip. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. Rot and decay. I hear them calling my name. Giuseppe. 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 I am losing nah, my sanity. You look like a Giuseppe. I'm leaving go, the yeah. TV on tonight so I don't feel alone. <laughs> Lieutenant Frank Giuseppe, MTF Epsilon 6. Hello everybody. I'm the rubber. Today, okay. we bring you a SCP Foundation presumed neutralized object, SCP-2480. SCP-2480, also known as an unfinished ritual, is speculated to be a dimensional anomaly centered around Bodfell Manor, located in a coastal and heavily forested town in Massachusetts, with a meager population of just over 9,000. Bodfell Manor was the home of Bodfell, a millionaire industrialist with an acute interest in the occult. Prior to his death, Bodfelt was the leader of a secret society known as Aditum's Wake. It is hypothesized that 2480 is a dimensional anomaly that cannot be directly perceived unless the observer is under the influence of perception-altering pill. The Foundation became aware of the existence of 2480 after intercepting and decoding a distress signal broadcasted by the GOC, Damn, Global the Occult GOC? Coalition. Shout out my big GOC guys, right? I right, voted right, GOC. Only because they're not with this shit, bro. They just exterminate every SCP fact. And promptly sent in an investigation team. 36 corpses were found scattered throughout the manor estate, eight of which were later identified as GOC operatives. What caught their attention was the manner of their apparent anomalous cause of death such as implosion, disintegration, implosion. fatal physical reconfiguration. Yeah. All of which are physically impossible to be performed by humans. In mid-1988, Site 13 failed to send a biannual report on the state of 2480. Believing it to be a bureaucratic error, the Foundation attempted to contact Site 13 directly without response. At first, two agents were sent to investigate. However, neither agent has since made contact, and their fate remains unknown till this day. The Foundation then dispatched MTF Epsilon 6 to re-establish contact with Site 13, as well as to properly secure 2480. They were accompanied by a researcher, Dr. Narvez. <laughs> Dr. Cozy, that me? Might as well be. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Due to their experience and efficiency, the task force successfully integrated themselves into the community in no time. They were welcomed as new residents and tourists by the residents in a warm and friendly manner at first. But soon enough, they began to feel something wasn't quite all there in the town. The locals seemed to be evading something unseen. On the sixth day, the agents were beginning to detect a certain wrongness in the town. 
a man who greeted Agent Goldstein with a bright smile and then the next day stared him down with dead eyes that never blinked. What in the world? He began to pick up a lingering smell of rot. Agent oh, Grayson, nah, who posed as a tourist, started to detect more frequent movement within the hotel, especially during nighttime. One night before he went to sleep, he heard movement outside his room oh, bro, you and decided chopped. to check through the peephole. And there he saw a face staring right back at him at the other side. Their eyes met, and the visitor began to slam his head. I ain't gonna lie, you're gonna have to catch his Glock 14 to the head. You ever been pistol whip? What is? What even is this? What are we discussing right now? This is crazy. Against the door, over and over and over again. As the days gone by, the task force was beginning to feel increasingly anxious and paranoid. Agent Lightbody was approached by a nervous-looking man on the street. I'm telling you, man, there are monsters in the fog, unspeakable horrors lurking among us, right in front of our very eyes. You just don't see it. He was found dead the next day, drowned with an agonizing look on his face. Oh, no, nah, bro. Their encounters were becoming increasingly disturbing. A group of kids were gathering on the street when the sun was setting. When Agent Giuseppe got close to them, they turned towards him briefly. Wait, what? There were blood dripping from the corners oh, nah, of their bro. mouths. They scattered, leaving behind a rat flayed and covered in bite. That Kai? What is going on here? Yuck, bro. Marks with missing chunks of flesh. On the ninth day, Agent Giuseppe disappeared. They went to his place and found his journal. All the doors were locked and the TV was left on. It was like he just ceased to exist. This town is sick and rotten. Why can't we just burn it to the ground? What are we even doing here? What is our command waiting for? There's something wrong in this town. The locals behave in such a haphazard way. Hell, sometimes they seem to be hallucinating in the middle of the street. And what's more, Dr. Narvez was trembling and sweating profusely. Meet me tomorrow morning in the town courtyard. There's something all of you need to see for yourself. The next day, they met up as arranged. The doctor handed a pill to each of the agents. This is a perception-altering pill. It'll let you see the truth behind this town. As they were about to inhale it, Dr. Narvez said to them, Whatever you're about to see, do not freak out, all right? They nodded and took the pill. Can't tell somebody not to freak out. You know they're going to freak out, especially if it's like something crazy. They're about to see Superman twerking on an ice... Minutes later, colors became more vivid to the agents. What the fuck? And soon, a yellow fog cloaked the town. They began to see people in dark hooded robes. Their outfits were composed of poorly stitched together leathers and hides. Their faces were obscured by the hood. Agent Lightbody averted her gaze away from them. The locals moved aside when the hooded figures approached. Never did they make eye contact. Agent Goldstein stilled himself and explored the town. He now saw the buildings in a state of ruin, covered in a Yikes, pulsating bro. flesh. The town church had been replaced by a massive, ancient black ziggurat, and the robed entities were prostrating themselves before the structure. One of the figures caught his attention. That nigga got flesh dogs, dude. You're disgusting. That, yeah, man, he's a freak, dude. It was abnormally tall and was holding several unknown creatures by a leash. The creatures had small, unblinking yellow eyes their mouths displayed rows of needle-like teeth. Their flesh was pale, yet muscular. They gibbered madly and moved in a frenzied pace. A few of the creatures attacked the smaller one among them. They tore into its flesh bro, with its yeah, talons bro, and yeah, teeth bro, as it yeah, squealed bro, in yeah, pain. Bro, yeah. This is madness. Whatever you're seeing, to my eyes, it's just some kids bullying and kicking a smaller kid. Agent Grayson was slowly losing his sanity. He looked skyward and saw tall black spires towering ominously over the town. We need to go to Giuseppe's place. I need to see what it's really like there. They arrived at Agent Giuseppe's house. They perceived the house as it truly was, rotten, decaying, and covered in filth and blood. They searched the basement. It was an ancient root cellar. On the far end was a large spiral painting on the wall. As they attempted to touch it, their hands went through it. They walked through the painting and found themselves in a tunnel. They all just went in. Moments Nobody stayed later, back. They reached the end and found themselves in an abandoned farmland. 
They realize that they've arrived at the Bodfell Manor. An air of dread was beginning to weigh on them. Soon enough, a silhouette of a massive humanoid shambled out of the thick fog. Its flesh was pale and flabby. Its what face dominated that? by a large... Look at that shit. Bro, yeah, I don't even know how. You can't even describe that. Shit looked like a broken down creepy pasta. Patrick Starr looked like my tongue on Thanksgiving. I don't know, but it's crazy. ...tooth-filled mouth. The entity was lacking in eyes, ears, and nostrils. Its teeth and three-fingered hands were heavily stained in what looks like pieces of human flesh. It charged at them. Agent Grayson warned the group, but it was too late for Agent Goldstein. The entity lifted him up with Just a single like hand and bit down his torso. Never in oh, their no. life have they heard a man's scream went silent so suddenly. They scattered and ran through the fields. Go back to the portal. Agent Lightbody found herself separated from the rest. The ground underneath her quaked, and she looked down. She saw not soil, but fragmented flesh, and crimson-colored tendrils burst no forth and seized her by the ankle, no way, pulling dude. her into a hole far too small for any human. The sounds of her screams shot through the field. Fortunately for the rest, they were able to regroup and decided that they would leave the very next day. On the final day of the mission, when they were boarding their boat at the docks, suddenly Agent Grayson's eyes widened and was then turned to slurry in a flash, as if he was oh hit by goodness. a great invisible force. What remained of the team felt their lives were spared, as if it was a warning from an unseen force, trying to tell them how easily it could do this to them. As the boat left the dock, the doctor noticed a crowd had formed at the bay. They looked on with faces that spoke to him of desperation, as well as the terror and madness of a town where unseen horror lurks. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber nah, Talks, crazy. where I share my life. That story was Maddie Mercer, bro. There's no way you just cut it off like that. It gotta be more. Yo, nah, that's crazy, G. I ain't gonna lie to you. That is crazy. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, all that. Yo, my mind is blown. I ain't gonna lie. There's nothing more from you to say. They just, just fucking my head up, bro. I'll be guys. I'll see y'all next time, bro. Ain't no way, bro.